Welcome to the intro. I'm Jess Huddleston. Straight off the prairies, our guest today is Katie Tupper, whose gorgeous voice will lull you into a neo-soul daze. Here she is performing Live Inside. Can I lay in your clothes tonight? Cause I'm tired of mine. Think they're tired of me. Can I lay in your eyes tonight? Just keep them closed so I stay behind. I don't think you know just how good it felt to take golden heads off your golden head. of a damn angel (laughs) thank you that was so fantastic thank you so much thank you so much for coming in we're so happy to be here this is the best day of my life fantastic mine too yeah awesome okay (laughs) and i see some familiar faces but we're gonna get into that a little bit later Absolutely. for now i want to start with sweet sweet saskatoon the homeland the homeland my homeland yes it's interesting (laughs) you know when i hear music like this so silky so soulful my mind wouldn't immediately go to prairies totally vast plains and grasslands so how do you think the prairies influenced this sound I think it had a lot to do with um being in Saskatchewan there wasn't necessarily a lot of other things that I took interest in so music exploration was one of them and so that sort of drove me into more music discovery and listening my parents have great taste in music so they sort of influenced it um, and there is like, there's a really cool, like underground neo soul, like R and B totally sort of sound that's in Saskatoon and coming up in Saskatoon. So I think I like just got in at the right time cause it's my taste. So, yeah. but there's definitely, there's a scene, but people discover it and then move out to hubs. Yeah. There's a lot of poetry in your lyrics where I hear, 
I hear that influence. My ode to the prairies. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> you touched on it briefly, you know, that ingrained idea that to make it in Canada, you got to move to Toronto, you need to move to Montreal. Yeah. How do you reconcile that having such strong roots in Saskatchewan? I think... Yeah, it's getting harder the more that I meet people that I really like in Toronto as well. It's a little bit harder to go back home and be away from this scene. Because yeah. there is a scene there, but you're playing the same spots and everything, which are great spots, but it's only so big. Right. Um, but I think especially with um, COVID and lockdowns, that helped change it a little bit because there's so much Zoom. I'm writing with so many people from all over because we're maybe I wouldn't have necessarily written with them yeah. over Zoom. Would have flown or whatever. That's too expensive. So now there's this whole like, I mean, it's just so accessible now that I think it's easy and you can fly in for things that you need to and yeah. right there. But I'm very tempted to move out here. Every single day I've been walking around, I'm like, I'm going to move here. I'm going to move here. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are I all your you. Toronto buddies. I feel like yeah. you're an honorary Torontonian at this point. They've welcomed me with open arms, thankfully. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, the besties. So <laughs> You're right, though. The, the pandemic really did level things out. I've heard that from a few people yeah. that it gave them that opportunity to connect with those that they wouldn't have it's, otherwise, which yeah. I think is a real benefit of a tough time. It's incredible. I think, yeah, it's if anything good was to come out of it, that's definitely it. Just the realization that with the technology that we have, it's very easy yeah. to do maybe 50% of what we do as musicians yep. online, you know? Sure. So Amazing. Mm. You mentioned your parents and yeah. the music that you grew up with, which I think is really cool because when I hear this, it reminds me so much of the turn of the millennium and, yeah. you know, India Ari and, and Joss Stone, Sade, all mm -hmm. that juicy, juicy goodness. <laughs> so I'm wondering who got you on to Neo Soul and that style of R&B? My parents started influencing it. Um, but I, when I was in high school, end of high school, I joined um, like a seven piece jazz collective okay and the bass player of it was like heavily heavily influenced by d'angelo so right. i had started listening to him a little bit but i think that was like when it really hit that i was like whoa this is all that i need to be listening to d'angelo man he uh -huh. is just the gateway to all good things absolutely yeah so i think it was sort of a few people that i was surrounding myself in the music community but then yeah my, my parents it's erica Badu, you know joss stone everyone like that so, all of that yeah you toured all around the U.S. when you were something like 14 years old yeah. with a marching band. Yes. Do tell. Um, I, in grade eight, they came to our school and showed us photos of a water park that would be <laughs> included in the trip if we joined That's this all marching takes. band. That's all it takes. And so I joined this marching band and I think I was, it would have been grade eight. So how old is that? Like 12 or 13? Yeah. And I went through like the most brutal like boot camp. I'm like 12 years old carrying these like bass drums around. Like, oh my gosh! It was you know it was fun, but the I was jacked. 12 year old ever? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But it was like too physically demanding for a little 12 year old girl to be doing. Right. But they're just like, we need someone. You look like you could play drums. Sure. So that's what I did, and you know my first tour. So that's right. A Rock grueling introduction to the music Absolutely. industry. Absolutely, it's only been up from there, thankfully. So. Good, good. So we're not gonna see you in another marching band anytime soon. Absolutely not. Okay. But peace and love to marching bands. I think they're yeah. so cool. I just can't do it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear another song because that first one just sure. was everything and more. So what's Let's the next track it. you're gonna play? Um, we're gonna play Misbehaving. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Let's, Let's get into it. Sweet. The misbehaving. I pick up what you're giving, but I need more. I need more. I move without I'm feeling. I give in without my reasons, but I need more. I need more. I need more. If I change up how I'm going, going, and give in to these moments with you, then I won't miss misbehaving for you. Ain't much to where I'm going. You move and think. I'm 
change of how I'm going, going, and giving to these moments with you. Then maybe you could be there for me, for me. Give me what I never thought I'd want from you. Wow. That was so lovely. Thank you so much. Does it feel good getting up there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Incredible. I think now that live music is back, I just like, you almost forget how special and important it is. And now it's back and it's like a nerve wracking thing to do. Right. But doing it again is like, you realize what you're doing it for. Yes. So much fun. For sure. And that leads me to my next question. I want to ask about the little baby tour that yeah. you just went on. I call it baby tour because you called it a baby tour. Yeah, that's it's. But it was your first tour ever. in a ever. minute ever. If we're not counting the marching band, yeah. Was it ever? <laughs> was it everything that you wanted it to be? And it more? was. It was so awesome. Mm. Yeah, I I opened for the Franklin Electric. Nice. Um, in four West Coast Canada Canadian dates. Right. Um, and it was amazing. Yeah, it was just like the perfect way to get back into live music. I drove myself in my little Honda Civic Amazing. and just like it reinvigorated. Now I'm like, I need to play live music every second of my life. Yes. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, the, all of my solo stuff, I've released it in like into COVID basically totally. 2020. So I wasn't sure if live music was going to be everything I remembered it to be. Yeah. And it's so much more and I'm so happy that it's back. So, Good. Yeah. You write a lot about love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, finding yourself in and out of relationships. And I think like anyone who writes anything, whether it's poetry, whether it's journaling, Mm -hmm. when you look back at those older versions of yourself telling these stories, it can be a bit of a trip to re-examine where you were. Yeah. I'm wondering, how does it feel for you to look back at some of your earlier songs and the stories you were telling? I have like started to look back on them fondly. I think that's the best way to do it because you could look back and, you know, critique yourself on how you're writing everything. But it's fun to see where we've gotten with writing and songs and everything. Definitely. So. But I think it's sweet, especially when you're writing about love. Right. It's like, oh, sweet, sweet girl. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Why did yep. you care about that so much? Stuff like that. But, Definitely. But I think most of my songs are like retrospective. So I'm still writing about it in a like future tense, I guess. Yes. Um, so I think that helps crush the... It's not immediate feelings of totally love that I write about most of the time. And then there's, you know, familial love Mm -hmm. and sisterhood, which I think is a great way of calling out our friend Georgia in the room here. Hi, Georgia. Georgia's Georgia's been on the show. You two are maybe my favorite new Canadian music besties. Thank you. Love this. Love this friendship. I'm wondering, as you're coming up in this industry and finding your way, What has that divine feminine kinship been like? Because you're at a similar stage of your career. You know, I I think you're both going to have really long and healthy careers in this business. I have absolutely no question. So it must be really important to have that have that friendship at this time. Yeah, we actually the person that connected us was like, you need this other person. Yeah. And we were in the exact same like almost to the week, like the exact same stage of finding our label and putting out new music and playing our first shows with that music. Mm -hmm. So just to have one other person that you can FaceTime and be like, what is going on right now? Like, you know, you can confide in and any of the stress or the fun stuff that everyone around you is super supportive and loving, but they don't know exactly identically what's happening. So it's been like insane. Yeah. I think we've gotten so close because of that. Yeah. It's a complicated industry. It's nice to have it's nice to have an ally and someone who just Absolutely, gets it. Absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. even this like I don't know, whipping a band together for me last minute and I'm crashing at her place like just so incredible to get to have a start a friendship and in this industry. It's it's really really nice. That's very special. Yeah. 
I like to think of this show as a place where you can manifest your wildest dreams because for us, you know, in the background of things, we get to say, hey, we saw them when. Yeah. It's really awesome for cool. us to be able to sort of forecast who's going to make moves in this space. So when you're looking ahead to your future in Canadian music, what's the dream? Like, what do you see for yourself where you think that's exactly what I want or how I want this to go? Yeah, I think right now it's just live music. Um, it's really at the forefront of my brain. I think once you get a little taste of it, it's like all you can think about. So yeah, more tours this fall. I'm really excited to be playing some festivals this summer. Um, and I just finished a second EP. So okay, yeah, just really excited, which I've been playing live, which has been super, super fun to nice. have them live in a live space, not necessarily a recorded space yet. And it's like a live litmus test. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So that's been really, really special. But yeah, live music. I'm so excited to keep playing and touring as much as possible, playing as many shows as possible, singing as much as possible, just Perfect. doing it. Well, it's out there yeah. now and I have yeah. no doubt it's going to happen. I'm yeah. so glad I got to see you at this point in your career and I just wish you all the best in everything that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Awesome. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Intro. For more, you can hang out here or you can head over to cbcmusic.ca slash The Intro. 